Good morning, everyone. We are here with the lovely Tanya. Oh, it's so damaged. Um, so she has some shellac on here, but as you can see, that's really, really weak. And she wanted some extensions. So we are taking the shellac off very carefully because her nails, as you can see, were really damaged. So we want to make sure we don't go any farther than we absolutely need to. And uh, then we will give her some extensions with some milk bath nails she's been dreaming about. Exciting. Very fun, very fun. I just want to be real careful because there's no hard gel under this. If, if it was uh, me that had applied this, this isn't my service so you know if it was my nails there would be a coat of trinity under this and so they would be much stronger and you wouldn't have to go quite so far and there wouldn't be any cracking on the natural nail but with this being uh, no trinity under it it's a much different scenario you've got to be real careful with what you are removing and do as good as possible to preserve every part of that natural nail so we're just being super, super gentle. Hi, Tessa. Teresa. No, not Ter Tessa. Teresa. Hello. Welcome. Yes, yeah, caught alive. And this is going to be a long one because we're going to be doing a full set. So a lot of my lives tend to be kind of shorties, but I I get asked all the time for people um, to see a full set, but obviously most of my clients don't need them. So I'm not really doing them very often. But this time we are gung-ho going live with full set with Tanya. She's been out of state. So this is why she came back. First time getting her nails done in the shop in over a year. Which is crazy town. So we'll get them back in business. My nails are beautiful. Oh, that's so sweet of you to say. They are starting to look a hot mess to me because I've been doing nails with them, of course. Yesterday, I shortened and reshaped these a little bit because they were just starting to look so gnarly. So I'll redo mine next week because they'll be about a month old already. But they were fun. Fun while they lasted. <laughs> They're a mood polish, um, which is hard to tell, but this hand you can see is warmer than this hand, so you can see that it's a little bit darker on the end. See how much shorter that nail is because I had to shorten it? Yeah. Oh, the life of a nail pick. There we go. So we're gonna zip this off. So normally with a full set, I don't have to do removal. So this is, I'm gonna be working a little bit extra fast to make sure that I get her done in time. So we're starting a bit later and we're doing a removal. So it's a little bit, a lot to do, but my time allotment for this would have been an hour and a half. So it's an hour and 20 minutes till my next client. So we'll see if I can get it going, get it in and out in my allotted time. So if you're a nail tech and you have, you know, a pretty tight schedule and you've got everyone booked in on the hour, or half hour, you need to make sure one of the things that I always recommend in my time saving class is that you have a clock that you can see behind your client's head. I'm wearing a watch, but you don't want to constantly be looking down at your watch. It's distracting and it's better to be able to glance up right behind your client's head and be able to see your clock. So have a nice big clock on the wall that you can keep track of. And my suggestion is when daylight savings time comes that you change it. <laughs> because many times I have forgotten it and I'm like, that's so weird. I thought it was a different time. And then, oh yeah, must change the clock. So here's another one that's, her nails are so, so thin. And when the shellac was done, they went down really far. You can see her poor natural nail through there. So we'll get these covered up and protected and hopefully they will be able to stay protected until they're completely grown off and she's got all healthy nail shouldn't be going back down to the natural nail over and over again. That kind of service where you're constantly removing, soaking off or constantly removing product 
is really, really damaging. And what can end up happening is you develop, uh, you can develop allergies to the products as well as nothing adheres. So if you've got um, nails that are damaged like this, it's really important not to be constantly doing them. So we're gonna cover them up, they'll be protected. Hopefully they will be protected until they're completely grown off and she won't have to have this problem again. So I'm getting my three utensils out for the day. Well, it won't be a problem anymore because I'm in state again. Yes, so we're back. I can see my, this is what happens when you don't see your local nail lady for, yes. you know. This, we gotta get back in business. All right, let's make sure I'm somewhat centered here. Okay, so I get my tools out when I pull out of my disinfectant tray and then I have to wipe them because they're, of course, been soaking in Let's Touch. Hey, Dorothy and Delia. All right, so I have my nipper and people are always wondering what I'm using. I have a Stalix, this is my favorite. It's 30 millimeter seven or the 30 millimeter five is great. My 2S bit and a pusher I don't want to mess up my camera all right the pusher is just a standard pusher i sell these at love nails different ones this one's a little bit flatter i it's nice to have a couple different ones in there she's got a pretty flat nail so it's nearly not a big deal some of them are really really curved and i'm not a huge fan of the ones that have such a strong c curve because not everybody has such a strong c curve so her nails are so, so, so short that it's going to be a little bit of a project making sure that all of our form fit is very good so that we get a good extension. And I'm going to be using Balance, um, Balance Coverage Cool. Alexa, be quiet. I told Alexa she could play background music, but then she started playing commercials and then she gets shut up, so that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to go play background commercials, then you're not going to be on doesn't work that way all right so give everything a good push i'm gonna switch to my bit my hand a dandy bit um i also want to talk a little bit about uh, electric file maintenance because one of my friends just said my electric file died i need a new one and that's not necessarily true you know i think she's had her electric file for probably at least 10 years and has never gotten it maintained and it's like a car i mean you're using this thing every single day you need to send it in for maintenance. So Bruce Atwood, who carries all the bits that um, I sell at Love Nails, he is a master at maintenance and repair of electric files. So probably no matter what kind you have, he's got the parts to clean it up and get it ready. So I'm gonna be leaving town this next week. And um, what I will do is put my electric files in the mail because I meant to do it over the holidays and I forgot and send them out to Bruce and give him a little maintenance. And so it's a good thing to do about once a year. He's pretty quick. Um, it's always good to have a spare. So I do I do have one spare that I'll keep here. So I might send it out um, this weekend, get it boxed up and then keep my spare and use that next week before I go because it will take him typically a couple of weeks to get it, fix it up and send it back. So um Definitely give your electric file some love and some maintenance. He'll repair if, you're, if your cord's messed up. Sometimes he replaces the cord. So he really gives it lots of love. So that's Bruce Atwood. And if you need to find his website to find out about that, you go to Atwood Industries. I think it's .net, but I'm not sure. You can Google Atwood Industries e-file and he will come up. All right, so just a nice, easy prep of the cuticle area. And I'm just going to go around and see if there's anything just really in my way. Otherwise, I'm just going to leave it because we are going to be filing quite a bit. And so I don't want to be doing too much cuticle nipping um, when I'm doing a full set. You know, if there's some more that I want to do towards the end, I can. Um, but if it's just real thick, I'll grab it. Or if it's in my way, like right here, there's a little bit that would be in the way of gel. So you don't want to do that. that I can prep my files and be ready, but I grabbed a new one and put it in there and then forgot that I needed to prep it. All right, so now we are gonna go through and very carefully, if there's any color left, you're gonna file the color off 
But again, I'm just gonna be super careful because this is already down to her natural nail. It's already super, super damaged and thin. So we're gonna be very careful around that. And she's gonna get it protected and then leave it alone. So there's gonna be no problem with it being able to grow out, which is good. Um, just cause she's just got poor little thinnies. Oh, Alyssa made it to another life, she's happy. So this is the one that's all cracked. So we're gonna be real careful again. We're gonna be very gentle. This is her natural nail, very, very thin. So you guys, this is where you've got to um, be real careful with your new clients that are coming in. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe it's a little bit of product. But I just wanna be really careful. I think I'm gonna just very carefully where the extension is because all it's doing is cracking and causing problems. So we're just gonna trim that up as much as possible. That's shellac, but it's underneath her nail. All right, and then always go around the cuticle again with the the top of your file. It's really important to get a really, really, really great prep because prep is what's gonna keep your nails on long term. Morning, Megan. Thanks for joining me, everyone. This is gonna be a full one. I'm going to be doing the full extension, which a lot of people don't see me do just because I'm not doing a lot of full sets. So hopefully this will help give some people a few tips and tricks on how to get a full set on. Um, it's gonna be a pretty, it's not gonna be crazy long. Um, we don't do crazy long on her because otherwise she calls me in three days and says, my nails are too long. And so I've learned over 10 years or so the length that is a, a requirement. So it'll be a, she wants to go almond this time. So they will be extending a bit past the nail, but not super long because otherwise I get the call and I can't, I can't fix them next week because I'm leaving. So <laughs> the length they are is the length they shall stay. So we will make sure they're not too long for her. At least you're not out yard working or anything crazy. Nope. <laughs> for the most part, like everything's unloaded in the house. Like we just finished with the last boxes last week. So yeah, that's good. Yeah, there's a lot that must got a lot of dirt is out there unpacking. I'm like, it's like you're moving in, but you're not even moving. It's not your house. <laughs> Did you see the time lapse that I posted the video on the yeah. property? Isn't that so cool? It is. I was very proud of myself. I don't do any video editing, which is funny because I've been doing these videos for years and years and years, but I don't edit any of them ever. So I've never done video editing, but I had all these two minute clips from the property of him excavating. And so I had to teach myself to combine and edit and I was quite proud of myself. So it's pretty exciting. So glad I could catch this. I'll message you later about this. Yes, please message me. I believe I owe you money for my wig for camp. So please message me so I can send you that. I've got to figure out a costume still. I had a dress, but Luris is going to wear my old beaded dress, which is quite lovely. So now i got to find a new dress for our prohibition party at camp. It's very fun. We only have a couple spaces left. And I've been talking with sponsors. We've started getting donations delivered. We got all of our swag from uh, Light Elegance and um, who else has come already? There's about four companies, I think, that sent their swag in real quick as soon as I sent them the address. So we have a great nail tech, Melissa, who's out in Florida, who is being our swag retriever. So they're sending it all to her, which is great. It's less stuff that we have to try to put in the trailer for Jared to drive all the way out to Florida. Oof, I see this and it's painful to me. I'm sure it's painful to you, but it's very painful to me to see a sad, sad, thin nail. I don't want to get anywhere even near it. So I'm just working around it. Megan says she tried that football prep bit and it was life-changing. I know. 
I am absolutely in agreement. That football bit that I use to prep is like the most amazing bit because a lot of prep bits that, you know, people had used on me in the past, I could still feel, I could feel damage. I could feel where it was digging into my nail and I didn't like that. And so when I discovered this football bit, it doesn't do that and it just glides right under the cuticle. It's, it is, it's life changing. I absolutely agree. All right. So her nails are prepped. I'm going to give them a wipe. This is a my, my standard mixture, which is prep and wipe and some acetone. The reason I have acetone in there, it's about a 75% prep and wipe and about 25% acetone. Acetone's a nice drying agent. Also, I do a lot of stamping. And when I finish my um, set and I go to wipe my tacky off my top coat, that acetone helps remove any... Um, any leftover stamping that happens to be on the thing. All right, so here we go. So when it comes to forms, we have to really look at how it's fitting. I'm just keeping an eye on the clock. I'm gonna try not to run over. My next one is Shayla though, which y'all know and love. So if I'm running a few minutes over, she won't, she will not balk but I do try to be as close to on time as possible. So as you look at this, when you slide it up underneath, I'm still not quite high enough. I wanna get this form quite a bit higher. Um, so you've gotta just trim, trim, trim until you get it super high. Now, if I was doing them super long and I wanted to get a really deep C curve, you would be doing the form a little different. I might do the teddy bear ears or things like that. There we go. Do you see how that just forms way up here now? That's much better. And come up, carefully close. All right. And depending on how her nail is, I don't want it to be arching down. It's not gonna be very long. So a slight overlap on the form is okay. Um, if anything, you want it to be a little bit open. So you wanna just kind of see how it fits on the nail and go from there. So even though this is pretty close, I still want it to fit a little farther up. So I'm gonna cut my form just a smidge. Megan said she got the product so much closer to the cuticle. Yes, and what's amazing about that bit is that it actually really, I don't know what, what's the best way to describe it? It conditions the cuticle. I have a client I talk about that she used to have just the thickest cuticles that was like such a project to get them cleaned up and clipped. And that was half the reason she would come to me is because of her cuticle work. And um, since I've started using that bit, she has like completely normal cuticles. And if I knew it was gonna happen, I would have like taken some video and some pictures of, hey, this is what this looks like before. And then three, four months later, we noticed that her cuticles started growing just completely normal and she doesn't have thick cuticles anymore. She's like on cloud nine. So, if you have someone that just has thick, like I'm talking like three, four times the thickness of a normal cuticle like this, you know, take some pictures and start using that bit every time. And in six months or so, you are gonna see a revolution. Okay. When you're doing a new set, form fits important. And we're gonna cut. See, this one is special. See all this little stuff? But you can see where her nail bed should be right here. So you can actually butt it up right up to where it should be. And it still needs a little bit. You don't want it to be pinching. And that's another thing is sometimes people have nail beds where they go, ow, ow, ow. So you wanna take that off, refit it. All right, so this just is bumping right up against what she had going on here because her nail's gonna grow right on top. So, that was weird. Oh, I just stabbed that too much. I don't want that that low. Hold 
I made it bump up too far. Fixing, fixing. There we go. So if you feel like your form is angling down too much, open your form and tilt your fingers up and you'll be able to make it not angle down so much. But if I see a crinkle, a lot of times it means that it's tilting up too much. So kind of work with it by rotating your form up and down to get the right angle that you're going for. There you go. How do you like the forms fit on the sides? I have trouble with this. Um, I mean, I like them to fit as snug as possible. So these are the easiest forms and as far as just in salon, easy, quick, put on forms. Um, I designed these forever ago. And I want them to fit as close as possible, but I also want to make sure that they are tucking in if needed. So it, it really depends on how long you're going. She is going to be doing an almond shape. So the product is going to start here and it's going to immediately start going in. Um, when you're doing a square, you've got to really do it a little bit different almost, but with her almond shape, it's going to be perfect. There we go. All right. Next. Sometimes I use a white gel pen to mark on the form where I want to cut it. Hey, that works. Anyone that's got tricks and tips, it's always a good thing. It's a little too much cuticle here. You know me. Clean up as much as possible. Get it as clear as possible. All right, so again, you can see the shape is completely different from her natural nail to the form, so we're going to make sure that we cut properly. So angular. This is the last time you're going to see me before I turn 20, 32. Oh, happy birthday. I know we were supposed to go do like escape rooms and stuff. We'll have to find out if any of them are open. open yeah. We live in a state for all my friends who live in the South that are enjoying free life. Yeah. We live in a state where they still want to keep things closed up for eternity. And what amazes me is that the numbers are really not that different to warrant such a thing, in my opinion. Nope. Like, it's one thing if the numbers were just so dramatically better in here than it was there, and it's really not, so it's kind of like, and with schools, our poor kids are, like, they're just going back yeah. this week, and there's states where their kids have been in school the entire year, and are their numbers, like, drastically different? No. So, that's my opinion on that matter, is that let the poor kiddies go to school. I know I was saying the other day, it was so nice to see the school buses out and about, you know, again. I know. I have one that parks here in the morning across the street for a few minutes. Like, they get early before their route or something. Uh -huh. So they park and they're waiting for their route to start. Someone's like, is there a school bus stop there? I'm like, no, it's just a blank space so that that driver can park and wait for their route to start. One of these days, I'll go give them coffee and say, good morning, here you go. <laughs> So this one's not quite, see there's still a bit of a gap here, so I wanna go a little bit deeper. Poor teens are really struggling. It's true, mine's 13. She doesn't like being cooped up, but she's been homeschooling already, which was really good because then it made it the transition just a little bit easier. But she's debating going to a regular school, but she'd only be going, she's going into eighth grade, so she'd only be going for one year. So it's kind of this, does she go, does she not go? She'll decide next year if she wants to. I mean, the trick of it is, is that she gets to sleep in forever. <laughs> I'm in Ontario. We're going back in a 30-day lockdown again tomorrow. I know, you poor Canadians. You guys are all about the lockdowns. Um, it's, you know, it's interesting how different each state, each country is kind of taking things. Um... I mean, I'm all for everyone that wants it to get vaccinated so that y'all can, so the numbers can go down and we can all get back to life. As we knew it. <laughs> right. 
somewhat. I mean, I don't think anything will ever be completely the same. I think there's a lot of people that will forever be afraid of getting a virus. And so I think it'll look a lot like, you know, Japan, where you always have people walking around in a mask. And so I think it's going to be like that forever. I think there's always going to be people now that won't go anywhere out of their house without a mask. It's just, it's their comfort zone now, you know. But that's, that's what it is, you know. I'm in New Jersey. All the schools keep changing to online half-day school. It's been online here in Washington almost the whole year, so... They're finally getting to do some half days, some breaks. One of my clients calculated her son gets to start going to high school for his senior year, and he'll get to go for 19 whole days before oh summer. <laughs> it's like, what's the point? You know who I feel most sorry for in all of this? The poor teachers. Can you imagine getting your whole classroom ready so that your students can come for 19 days? Yeah. I mean, the poor teachers, no one's really talking about them and how struggle it is for them. I have one teacher who teaches kindergarten, and it's at a private school, so she's been open the whole year. And she says the hardest part is that there are some parents who are afraid to send their kids to school. So she has a classroom full of probably 80% of her kids, and then there's like five kids that are on the computer. And so she'll be teaching, and then she has to remember to like, look at the computer and like talk to the computer while she's talking to the students. And it's like that for all of the classes. And I feel like, you know, if there had been one teacher that could have just taken all of those students and done all the online and all the other kids could have just had normal school, it would have been so much easier on her. Yeah, for sure. So anyway, sorry about the tangent, but we're just filing forms and it's really not that exciting. <laughs> I'm just cutting forms. So you know, we do what we do in the salon. We chat about life. Croatia's open. That's Greece good. is open. I know. I can go get my teeth finished. I'm going to have an all-new smile, y'all. Those of you who know me at nail camp, this year in May, it's not going to be new. It's going to be the same. But come the October camp, my smile's going to be all new. It's so exciting. It's way cheaper to do dental work in Croatia, my friends. And they do an excellent, excellent job. So... I wish I would have known this, you know, before I started my journey. I know. But you don't like flying, and it is a long, long flight to Croatia. This is true. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to grab X-Bond. So we're going to be using Balance and Trinity. And if, you're, if you want, you can use your Trinity Clear, but a lot of people really, really love X-Bond. So what I'm going to be doing is doing a Bond gel for, um, because I'm going to be using balance and I want to make sure that my balance is going to adhere properly. So I don't need to use a whole bunch of primers or anything. You can, if you'd like to, I found that, um, for most people it is, this product works like a charm without the necessary things. So we're back to doing nails. Michelle says she can't travel. My shot appointments today. I'm so happy to have made it on the list. I still mask, but not as much as around. Yeah, it's, I'm glad that they are finally telling people that, you know, if you've had the vaccine, they're finding that people are not catching it and spreading it. And I think that's really important news because I have a couple of clients who are older that got vaccinated, but she was still scared. Like they still weren't going out anywhere because the, you still might catch it and pass it and all of this. And so, yeah, so now, yeah, so now that they're telling people, okay, it's fine. You can go out. You should be good to go. Is it like going on? No, come out. I'm testing these new lights, but the annoying part is, is every hour it has to be turned on again. Alrighty. So again, this is just a quick layer of X-Bond. You don't have to be super crazy about it. I just want to get it on there. Get coverage. And I'm going to be doing milk bath nails, and so I want to make sure that she gets a nice covered nails. So we're going to be using coverage warm and that's going to make sure that we have a nice extension that has a full coverage so that we can cover up her poor little bits and stuff. And luckily once these are protected, they're going to be good. What new lights? Um, it's just a new sun lamp. I know a lot of people get sun lamps. And so I do like to try them when new ones come out. So someone's like, is this lamp going to work for me? I can tell you, yeah, I've used it. I have curing, no problems, things like that. So it's just a new sun lamp that I'm trying out. Um, you know, it's one of the things that because I'm a nail tech, yeah, I'm a distributor. I distribute products, but I've never stopped doing nails and I still do nails 
30 to 40 hours, sometimes more, in the salon a week. And so I'm trying to find the brush I want. I know when you have so many, it's like, what is the one that I'm going for in my drawer? That one. Um, I use a different brush when I am doing gel application as opposed to a 30-day manicure. So I wanted to grab my 111. It's an oval brush. Oh, this one has been tainted. Sometimes if you get gel on it and you don't wipe it off and it gets exposed to light. Oh, I think I'm going to need to go get a new one. I don't have a new one in my drawer. Okay, you come on out. Oh, I had it in the wrong um, container. I have, you know, like organizers and it was in, see, this one's perfect. Okay, so I'm going to be using Balance. Michelle says she likes her sun lamps. They work great. They do work great. Um, I tell people to replace them once a year, which they're like 30, 40 bucks. So that's not a big stretch to get a new lamp every year. Um, but they are definitely uh, something that they're, they're not as high quality. So I just tell people, you know, get a new one every year. Plus your clients bump into them all the time and they turn into crap. So <laughs> let's be real. They start looking pretty gnarly. Okay. So this is the balance warm and the balance cool pink. So, um, I'm going to be building her extension and the arch out of this product. I'm going to go ahead and use the warm on her, but if you want something more pinky, you can use the cool and I'm going to be pairing it with Trinity warm, which I must've put away on accident. Where did it go? That's so strange. Do you see a giant pot? Nope. Oh my goodness. I had it out. And it disappeared. That's very strange. Okay. Well, I will get this going and then I will try to find I had it on my table. So weird. Oh my gosh, so weird. Okay, I will get some more if needed, but it's so weird. Is it on top of the heater? Oh, yes. Huh, thank you. I'm like, where did I put it? I had mixed it because some of the pigment was doing it, and I put it on the heater, and that turns it. Oh, I had it on a little long. Look how jellyish that is. So we're just going to let that cool right off because <laughs> I had that on there a long time. If you ever have bubbles in your product or anything, um, you can get a little bit warm, and that's going to work. But that was a lot warm for a little long all right, so balance coverage warm. And this is a little bit stiff. If I had put this under the light, it would have gotten a little bit easier to use. And maybe I'll put this over there for a second. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating my arch here. So it's just right in the middle of the nail. And then I'm going to be doing my extension down. And the reason is, is because when I do the cuticle area, I like to keep it really good and thin. So I'm actually going to be using Trinity, almost like a fill around the cuticle area. But doing my extension portion, I'm gonna be using the balance. And again, we're not gonna to go too long because I know this lady and we go too long and disaster strikes. They will grow, right? They do grow very fast with accidents. Got it. So I'm just playing with it. I have a little bubble there, so. I want to make sure that I'm getting product over here where the, the natural nail meets and that I have plenty down the sides so I can shape. Okay, so if I look at this from the side angle, I want to have an arch and my extension, okay? And that's the main purpose of this layer. I'm going to go ahead and grab that. It's probably going to be, see, it's a little bit easier to grab already just from me sticking it near the heater for just that short amount of time. It doesn't take much to, uh, much heat to make these a little bit um, runnier, a little bit smoother viscosity. So a little bit of heat will go a long way. But don't put it in a microwave, for goodness sakes. I better say that. Heating pads are your friend. Um, when I went and did some training in Poland, she keeps a heating pad on her table all the time because she likes her uh, her gel quite a bit smoother. So, so again, I'm gonna make sure I have 
a, enough length so that I can shorten. If you don't go long enough, then you have to come back and add. So I want to have enough length that I can shorten and shape that. That's going to be good for you. Yep. You know me. I do. Oh, I've only been coming to you for like over 10 years. I know. Since Miss L was two. It's crazy. She was so bitsy. Every time I see pictures, I'm reminded this is why we want babies, because they're so cute. <laughs> So we head off to St. Louis next week to start all the IVF stuff. So again, I'm leaving the cuticle area. Don't, don't try to cover up the whole nail at once. One of the reasons I do it this way is that if you cover the entire surface of the nail, you may end up having your product just start to flatten if it self levels at all. And the whole point is to give yourself a decent, um, Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Uh, a decent arch. I was thinking about how I wanted to make sure it got over into that corner well. <laughs> thinking and talking at the same time sometimes can be difficult. And keep an eye. What do you use the oval extensions and the flat brush for 30 days. Yes, so this is the flat brush that I use for 30 days because the reason is is because I'm floating gel right now um, and kind of moving it around so I like to use the oval. But when I'm doing a 30 day manicure, I'm applying my Trinity like a gloss. And so you want to have a very flat brush with no belly because you wanna be able to gloss it on. And so it's a completely different uh, movement of the brush and you want to have a very smooth finish and so doing that 106 for your 30 day gives you a much smoother finish like a gloss as opposed to using an oval brush so that's why I use uh, the oval brush for this because I like to have it just I like to be able to move uh, the the product around with this that belly in the brush kind of grabs it and moves it a little bit differently than a flat brush does so you kind of take advantage of having that belly in the brush belly in the brush all right so one of the benefits of these sun lamps it does have a slow cure on so when you put it in the first 30 seconds um, has a slow cure but you can take it out um, if it starts to get warm at all you do have some damage so I would not be surprised if it starts to get warm so please take it out but um, the sun lamps do have that um, slow cure so that it can be at half strength instead of full strength which is nice um, but yeah, I don't like that I have to constantly turn it on every hour. My it's lamps are, yeah, my lamps are under the table, so it's just not something I'm used to, and yeah, maybe I'll get used to it, but we'll see. I'll give it a couple weeks, and if I can't take it anymore, I'll switch back. But my goal, what the reason is, I try, try to, te when I test a lamp, I get it and use it for at least a month, and that way, everyone that I've done can come back in, and I can see that everyone's nails are good, there's no lifting, anything like that. So again, I'm using the Balance Coverage Warm Pink. I'm going to make sure this form is tucked down really good. Sometimes forms move. So right before you put your product on, if there's a spot that it needs tucked in, slide it back down, okay? That makes sure that you get it. And this is a nice color. It's going to be a really good base for under the milk bath nails. This is going to be a nice, solid, natural looking color, which is great. I miss any questions does that cure well not to opaque this is not to opaque this will cure well um it is see how you can see the lines of the form through the nail if i can see the lines of the form through the nail your light can see through the nail so it's a really good way to know okay i know that i'm not getting too much product on because i can actually see through it still um, if you're using a much more opaque gel something like the foundation colors um, those are extremely opaque and have to be put on much thinner but these ones that are builders if i can see through it um, you know and i can still see the lines of the form through that pretty well then the light can see through it and so it's going to cure just fine her poor little pinky oh, just makes me cry inside look at it go 
covered and protected and happy. So um, I had some talk, I did a, a private class a couple weeks ago and I was going through all the product lines and we were, you know, I was showing them in person testing the different strengths of the different products like Balance and Enhance and Trinity. And really the main difference of all these products is just viscosity and its preference as a nail tech. So a lot of people will look at accents and go, oh my gosh, there's so many products. I don't know where to start. I don't know what to use. And, you know, if you talk to your distributor, someone like myself, you tell me, what, how do you like to work? Do you like to brush on multiple layers of product? Or do you like to build an extension in a quick couple of steps like what I'm doing? Um, do you like coverage colors or not? You know, there's some different uh, things to help you choose what products you need to use, but nobody uses them all. It's just so that you can figure out what your preference is as a nail tech. So the strength is very similar. It's just, do you like a thicker gel? Do you like a thinner gel? That's where it comes into play. Um, Trinity is kind of the exception of the rule. It's designed so that it's a super easy fill, all-in-one step product, and it does work unbelievably well. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put this on the low heat for her here. Hold on, come out for a second. Okay, just want to make sure the right button's pressed. Hey, Carlette. All right, so now I'm going to go to Trinity SW1, and this is quite a bit runnier than I would like because I left it over there for too long. In comparison, I will show you what regular Trinity does. Do you see how slow that moves and how quick that's moving? So that's what a little heat will do. So we're gonna be going quick with this and getting it in the light because it's gonna move on me. And all, wow, it feels like there's no weight to it at all. So what I'm gonna be doing here is just applying uh, basically like a fill to the cuticle area, not going all the way back because I, I still wanna be able to get my file in there to finish file and fill it in and see if there's anywhere that needs any extra. And we're gonna flash that for two seconds, please. Just wanna take a little drink and go on. So this flash cure is gonna be plenty to get this starting to cure. Um, it also helps prevent heat because if they go in for just two seconds, it's not gonna get hot. Once they hit three seconds, it starts to get hot. So you wanna teach your clients one, two, out, and they're not gonna have any heat. So it's a great trick, go ahead. One, two, and out. That's enough to um, keep my product from moving and to prevent some heat spike situation. So again, that's an, this is the uh, Trinity Warm SW1. It's a warm pink and it blends in perfectly with that balance, two seconds. And so it's gonna make it so that I can have a nice finish. What I like about the Trinities is it has a bond in it, but also it's got some flexibility to it. It's not super, super stiff. I mean, it is, it's strong enough certainly to build an extension, but it's, it's more flexible than I expected when I sculpted some out onto a form. And the benefit of that is that it moves with the natural nail. And when you have a product that moves with the natural nail, you get less lifting. So the more rigid a product is, the more it's going to lift. So an acrylic, for example, gets harder and harder over time. It's always changing. And people will notice that after a while, they start to get a lot more lifting with their acrylic. And a lot of that sometimes has to do with how hard the product is compared to, um, you can take that out for a few seconds before you keep it in all the way, if you'd like to let your thumb cool. Um, because it gets harder and it, you know, the natural nail is still trying to move under it. It's also something that attributes to pocket lifting. So if you get a lot of pocket lifting for, you know, for so many years before LED lamps came out, pocket lifting would happen and the number one cause was bad bulbs. So if your bulbs started getting weak, you needed, you would see pocket lifting on a whole bunch of people and you would say to yourself, oh, I should have changed my bulbs a month ago because now for the next month, you're going to be dealing with people's lifting. But nowadays with LED lights, you don't have to change the bulbs. They don't get weaker over time. So you don't get pocket lifting from that. You typically will get pocket lifting on thumbs from people using them as a tool. Um, and then from products that are too hard. 
for that client. If they're, they need more flex, you might see some pocket lifting. So this is just a quick step. I'm just filling in that back layer. Do you see how fast this is? So you put down your first coat and you get your extension and you get the second coat in as a fill. So it makes it a lot faster than trying to build an entire thing once. Is the sun lamp that looks similar to LED? No, yes, uh, the one that had prior to the LED out. So the one I'm, I'm testing right now does not look like the light elegance one. The other sun lamp that I've used lots and lots does look like the dot. Um, and that one works fine. I also have a dot. They are not exactly the same. I have a dot because I'm, I need to be doing all the light elegant stuff because I'd like to carry it for you all, but I have to do all the trainings first and I have not had time, my friends. But I was a little jealous of Madison at that class this week. So <laughs> I was like, I should have done it. Then I would have been out of town because we are all wanting to be out of town these days. Well, I'll be in St. Louis, but. I don't think I have anyone watching my videos from St. Louis. If I would, I would stop in, say hello, do a little nails. And, you know, in a previous life, I probably would have tried to fit a class in. <laughs> but I'm behaving myself. Yeah. I'm behaving myself. We're going for medical stuff. I'm going to behave myself. All right, so that is that. It's a very quick application. By now, her other hand has completely cured. So we are going to wipe and file, my friends. Wipe and file. So we're going to pop off the forms. They are. What I like about these forms partially is because they're sticky, but they don't leave um, stuff on the fingers. Some forms I take off, and I'm like peeling stickers off the sides of their fingers, and it drives me crazy. So what I'll sometimes do is just grab my e-file and clean up the edges before I hit it with my hand file because of things like this. <laughs> and depending on how long the nails are will depend on how much I'm doing with my electric file to finish, but I am a big hand filer when it comes to finishing a set of nails, um, which, you know, is part of the reason I probably purposely don't do a lot of full sets. It's a lot of work, a lot of work to hand file a full set. So if you do this too much, you can end up hurting your shoulder. I have quite a few nail tech friends that have had to have shoulder surgery. So I'm hoping that I can do things to help prevent that from happening. My tendonitis, my elbow is finally starting to feel better. Oh, that's good. I know. I had it pretty bad for a while. It was hurting every night. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my free edge, and then I'm gonna go around the cuticle. The last thing you wanna do is start filing in the middle of the nail. It's very important that that is not the first area to file. You want that to be your last area to file. So, hold on, I gotta get the camera. It's a little bit, a little bit in my way here. So after I do the cuticle area and smooth that out, I'm gonna hold up the nail and look down the barrel and thin it. And it's kind of hard because you guys can't really see that I am hunched over like a little turtle when I'm doing this. But you wanna make sure you do that. All right, so after you get your free edge thin, now you can blend in your arch. And the reason you do this last is because you really need to see what the whole shape of the nail is going to be. And so you start with your cuticle, then you do your free edge, and then you blend in your arch. And she does have a little bit of a natural arch, so you're going to have a little bit um, of a curve, but that's going to be, you know, it's going to help attribute to that almond shape. Because if you look at an almond, they do have that curve to it, so... It's correct. Alrighty, cutie little nail. And I'm just doing light pressure. A lot of people ask me what files I use. Um, right now I'm testing files. I seem to test a lot of things all the time. So I'm testing these files and I like them pretty good um, because I loved the accent zebra files but they changed them you know what i found i found two see this black 
ridge in the middle when they changed them and they went to a white one i don't know if they changed manufacturers or what they won't tell me but they got crappy and so i saved two of those ones that i loved so very much so that i can compare as i try to find replacements because i get texts all the time that are like when are they sending giving it back to us i'm like i i don't know i don't know that it's ever going to happen so i am on the quest to find good replacements and so far this one is as close as I've found to our beloved zebra files that worked so well. So it's a 100, 180. So this is a nice coarse side and this is a 180 side, which lets me smooth out nicely. Am I getting good light? Okay. So after I've done my cuticle area, I'm looking down the barrel hunched over because I need to be able to see it. Now, what I've noticed that some people will do is they'll bounce like this, and that is not what you wanna do. What happens when you bounce is that you create bumps all over in the nail. You wanna glide, keeping your file flat on the nail as much as possible because it'll pick up any high spots. So pay attention to how you file, and if you are a bouncer, try to stop bouncing. You'll have a much smoother nails if you can keep your file on the nail as you're moving you'll get much better results. So then look at it from the side and see if your arch is a bit high, which it is. So I'm just gonna smooth it down a little bit more. Perfect. And then blend it all in. Look at it from the top. How's the shape, my friend? I love it. You do the best almond shape. <laughs> and this has been attributed by other clients too, you know. I know, Kara's a almond fiend. She always gets excited when I do it. So now that I'm finishing her filing, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just removing any excess cuticle that I left on from earlier so that when I go to do her design, I can get everything as high up as possible, which gives you the best um, grow out over time. You don't want to start with it a mile away. <laughs> no, and sometimes I'll see pictures of people of nail, you know, they do nails, and I'm like, are these two weeks old? Because if they're not, they look like they're two weeks old. Like, they just, you got to get closer to that cuticle. I get as close as possible because my clients go a month, and that's part of the battle is that some people go, oh, my clients wouldn't go a month. But I'll look at the pictures of the nails I do, and it's because they're walking out looking like they're already going two weeks. So you got to get as close as you can, and that will really help some techniques. Everyone's so quiet now. Do we still? Yeah, we still got people hanging out. Say hi if you're hanging out with us. Or I'll stop talking. So again, you want to go around the cuticle, pull the skin back when you get over to these sidewalls and get in there smooth. Okay, get in there flat like this and roll up. I was recently uh, on one of the message boards and someone was saying, how do I get it so I don't have a notch? Start flat and roll up. And that's how you're gonna help prevent your notch. So Vicki Peters moved from one of my old besties. I remember her. Yeah, I love her. It's very sad. She would be pretty excited about camp that's coming up. Seen her getting all dressed up for it. And when you do almond shape, you want to compare from nail to nail. You want to make sure your nails are keeping this a similar free edge. And also you want to compare length from cuticle to free edge. This one's now a little bit long just a hair, but you want them to be about the same. Look down the barrel. favorite shape so far. You know how I usually like this square oval one? You go back and forth. There's nothing wrong with that. That is true. I do keep it interesting. I go back and forth because I mess mine up too much. <laughs> so I'll start out square and then when I go to reshape because they get all bumped into each other I turn into oval. So then they'll be oval for like the rest of the time until I re-sculpt them again. So that's why I do that. 
I love watching the filing process. It's memorized. Good. I'm glad you're mesmerized because, you know, I just feel like I'm doing the thing. All right. So are you doing your um, camp nails next week then? No, no, no. I'll just do um, my April nails next week. Camp okay. nails will have to be the week of camp because they certainly won't look the same. So um, I'm actually going to be doing a foiling. I've already decided because I just started getting in the blue amber foil gel adhesive from Anna with Sislinska. It will be on my site this weekend. It is an amazing foil gel. Like, check it out. The only oh mess gosh. up on this was that little bit where I moved the foil. This is on white. Talk about a full coverage foil. Really, really fantastic. Um, so I'm going to start carrying that at Love Nails. And um, Profiles has redone theirs as well. So I'll be testing that when it comes in. But um, it's going to revolutionize the foiling process because they're sticking so well. So I'm pretty sure that I'll be doing a cool foil. Probably something very similar to just what I showed you. Because it looks like I did so much. And I will have done nothing. <laughs> I might add um, some glitter to it because, like, it's a cool design, right? So it there's is. another one, couple. But I might go through and add some glitter into a couple of the parts so that it looks like I did so much more than I really did. So, yeah, it's impressive. It works really, really, really well. And um, I'm super excited about it. So I talked with Anna. I said, I got to sell this to all my people because, you know, it's a lot of people don't want to buy from multiple places and people need this foil gel in their hands. And I want to, I'm going to test the new profiles one and I have a feeling theirs might be um, the same. So people that are, are brand uh, dedicated can get the new um, profiles one that also should be pretty fantastic. All right. Take a look. Let's check the length. It's a little bit long still. Whenever you shorten, it's not just shortening. You've got to shorten, and then you have to reshape the whole nail. So make sure that when you are talking with a new client that you're checking right at the beginning, is this length good, is this length good, like the pinky, and then check the next nail. And just make sure, because you don't want to file the entire set, and then they're like, you know, they're all a little bit too long. I need them shorter, because now you are filing all over again. So when it's a new client, like I know that the length that she can go. So I'm not having to have this discussion with her. But if it's a new client, you have to have that discussion. Yes. Because otherwise you are going to be filing a lot. You want to read that for me? Yeah. Those are the best kind of nails and lower. It looks like you did so much, but you barely did anything. Absolutely. freaking <laughs> Like, I look at some of these beautiful designs that some nail techs do, and the first thing I think in my head is, oh, my God, that took four hours. Like, it just, it's not real-world, real salon. And so I like to find tricks and techniques to make nails that look like I spent four hours four doing hours, them. But... but no, I did not. When I wore my Christmas set last year, everybody couldn't figure out that we had done the stamping. Mm -hmm. And they were like, oh my gosh, did she like hand tape that? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, just doesn't hand paint anything. People are like, oh, you're such an artist. I'm like, uh, negative. Yeah. Because if you tried to see me, if you want to, I, I recommend you do not pair up with me for Pictionary. Because that is not uh, beneficial to you, I can guarantee you. But my daughter is an amazing drawer. I'll spout about her for a second. So she just won a contest. So it was, she's very into anime. There was this anime contest where they sent out like a line art of um, a ballet dancer. Oh my God. And they wanted people to design the clothes for the ballet dancer. Mm -hmm. And then they um, were going to use one of the designs and they picked hers. So they redid the exact same picture, a similar one, using her design. So it's really, really cool. If y'all want to see it, leave a comment, and I will um, 
I want to post see it, it in the comments. Yeah, I'll do a side by side so you can see what she drew and then what they I'm turned so it excited. into. She's such an artist, and yeah. I can say this from spending. I spend a lot of time with her daughter. Yeah. And I can say this from experience. Yeah. Oh, she was so excited. She found out at like, I don't know, 11 or 12 one night. And she was like on cloud nine. She was like, oh my gosh, I won. And there's another contest for KomoriCon, which is another um, anime thing. And they were supposed to announce the winner for that the end of February. Let me tell you what she does every day. Check Looks on the there, tea. checks it. She's emailed them. I'm like, do y'all realize that this is a competition girl? Like, she wants results. She wants to know if she won or if she didn't win. I don't know where she gets the. Uh -huh. I don't know where she gets uh -huh. the competitiveness uh -huh. from at all. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Speaking of competitions, the lovely. Eileen says, see it. Oh, you want to see it? Okay. And if you guys comment on it, I will show her. She'll be excited. Um, so, uh, what was I going to talk about? Eileen. Oh, competitions. Eileen's yeah. here. Oh, yeah. Um, competitions. So, at camp, if you are coming with us to uh, Florida, Lisa Comfort's going to be there. And she is, you know, with competitions starting over, basically, in the industry, She's looking to bring um, Nalympia into the U.S. It's huge all over the world. She does a lot. And I've done some judging with her. So is Lauren Wireman. Um, as far as the judging training, not actually judging yet. But she wants to talk about competitions and what's beneficial to it and what she wants to do and get some feedback. So if you're going to be at camp in Florida, um, make sure you... Talk to her. I think I'm not sure she's going to be doing a class on it. We're kind of up in the air because she, right now she's arranged to do a e file class in Spanish for one of her time slots, Ooh. but we're not getting the Spanish turnout that I was hoping for. So she might be turning that into a free competition workshop. So. And I just got notification from the chat that they want to bring an educator in. So we might actually have even more education. We already have over 70 classes to choose from at camp. So it's just getting more and more difficult for people. <laughs> it's like, so sorry. Classes. Yeah. It's like when you walk in here and you don't know what you want to do on your nails. Mm -hmm. And they look at everything and they're like, holy, you know. This, this is going on with the classes now. Yeah, there's, it's tough. It's a tough decision on what to take. And when I do the feedback form, that's one of the number one things. People say, I wish I could have taken more classes. And it's like, you would have to have camp for a month to get to take all of the classes being offered. It's just not possible. But the classes that are popular, we try to repeat at the next camp. So some people, that's why we get some people that will go from camp in, you know, on the west coast to camp on the east coast yeah, she's asking the police will be at nail camp she west. will be at nail camp west so will Anna Sosinska. i can't say her name correctly so i just try to say it fancy but i have no idea how to actually say it properly i'll have to have her train me but yes she will be at nail camp west teaching e-file she um came to the first camp in idaho in 2019 and just loved it which you know that's what happens when you go to camp you experience it and you love it. I don't know anyone that's gone to camp and said, mm, not for me. And then they never go again. Um, we did have one person come from Florida one time to the retreat when we were doing it in Seattle and she got there to camp and she registered and then we never saw her again. I think she just wanted a like vacation to write off or something <laughs> because I think she was like, Oh, I'm in Seattle. I'm just going to go play in Seattle. So she showed up a registration, got her book and then we never saw her again. It was very strange. That is. But that's the only time that's happened. Normally, when you, once you come to camp, it's fun. Yeah. Got lots of newbies coming to Florida. So if you are a veteran come at camp, please be welcoming to all the new ones. Trying to decide where to go next year because... Hopefully, we're going to be, like, right in the middle of the building process for our property. So, I, 
I can't take a ton of time off. And really, it's not even me that can't take it. I mean, I guess it's, I could take the time off. It's Jared. It's Jared can't take the time off. And he has to drive everything to camp. And it can take, you know, Florida's going to take over three weeks for him to get out there and come back. Um, which right now, we're right before the building process. So it's okay. But once we start building, it's going to be really hard to tear him away. So, although we've been researching last night on um, metal studs. Okay. Because wood cost has gone through the freaking roof. Oh, no. And so it's, like, gone up 130% in a lot of places. Sometimes, like, the sheathing, which you put on a roof or mm -hmm. um, around the things, went from 12 to $13 a sheet to $55 what? per sheet. Oh, my. So God. we're like, how can we – we can't afford the materials for the house. And so there's some houses and some builders that – had to just stop building in places because they had priced a house out to build based on the market before COVID. And then everybody started remodeling and supply and demand went crazy. And so there's no wood for a decent amount of price. So I emailed our house designer to see if there was different stuff we needed, but the price is cheaper now to do it with steel studs and so anyway all this to say that i don't know how much time you can take off next year so it might be it's gonna affect the camp location it might it might affect the camp location but also the date we might not have a spring camp we might not have camp next year until the fall and then i might have to try to go central like you know chicago or something that's a little bit more in the middle um, Chicago or Texas, something like that. I've been wanting to do Texas, so maybe Texas, but we just did not South, so I'm guessing Chicago makes more sense. <laughs> so that might be what happens next year because getting him away from stuff for a year would be tough, or for a month. You can read if you want. Uh, same here. The cost of lumber went through the roof. I'm glad I did my nail room renovation. At the beginning of COVID. Mm-hmm. Oh, it says, I really wish I could make it to camp again, but not just not in the cards. Too many medical procedures at, around camp time. It's Alyssa. <laughs> Nancy says, yes, yes Chicago. Chicago. Oh, and Eileen recommends Minnesota. Minnesota. Well, Jared, see, Chicago and Minnesota are actually good for Jared because Jared has besties there. And so... If we go to these places, he's very excited because he can spend some time with his besties before or after camp. Um, but it's going to be, it's really just going to depend on the build. If the build's going really, really well um, and we're on schedule and I can do a camp in May and he can be off for a month, then we'll do one in May. But it's possible so it might not be until the fall. It be dependent on what happens. Yeah, it depends on how fast we get framing done. He's gonna hopefully start framing in August. Um, and it just depends on how many people are gonna help him, but he's gonna be building from the ground up himself. So it just depends on how many helpers he has. And some of the steel framing, they actually produce it off site and they send you like your walls. And so, what? yeah, so it may go way faster if they're sending, like, trusses and walls and he doesn't even have to build it. He just has to put it up. So, yeah, that's a big difference. So Nancy says she'll bring him beer. Good answer, Nancy. Good answer. We all know Jared loves his beer. We do know Jared loves his beer. And it's funny because the one beer he can't – he can get pretty much any beer, but he likes, he likes local beers. So if we're going to your state – Bring him whatever local beers, and he will try them all. He'll, he loves to do that. Um, but, like, in Wisconsin, he loves Spotted Cow, which you cannot get. Even even in Illinois, on the border of Wisconsin, if it's a w Illinois address, you cannot get Spotted Cow. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. So he loves the local beers, for sure. All righty. How's it looking? Let's see. Let me get rid of some of these cuticles that are going to prohibit me from getting as far back as possible. Because if you look at that, it's a full week grow out when I remove that and give the nails a little push. So you see how much more nail is exposed? This is vital if you really want to get as much time between services as possible. And when most of my clients are going three to four weeks, time is helpful. All right, so 
now we are going to do a barrel view. So here we go, barrel view. Because they are almond, you're not gonna have a big C curve on these. They're more flat underneath. So as you could see when I was filing, I'm basically going completely flat. So you're not gonna have a big C curve with an almond shape like this as you would uh, like a stiletto or something like that that's a lot longer, you're gonna be tapering those in. So with an almond shape like this, I come flat underneath and um, keep it shaped just like that. Are we on time? Yes, we are gonna be joined by Shayla in about 10 minutes. All right. She can't wait to see. If you ever do New Jersey for camp, I'll bring local beer. Well, we just did Maryland, so if we do New Jersey, it's gonna be a little while because we are just in that area. So I do try to move it around. Um, I think the next time we're in the Northeast, I'll probably go up farther, Connecticut or Maine for Jessica White, something White, like yeah. that. Definitely yeah, what I was just thinking. right, something a little bit farther north. Um, but I try to bounce it around, and I mean, it works. It really helps people to see, um, to come try camp when it's closer to them, and then after they've tried it, they're like, "Whatever, I'll I'll get on a plane." Like they <laughs> yeah. they get it, so it's they get that it's totally worth the cost to grab a flight, especially these days, man. Oh my god, Southwest is like giving flights away practically. For sure. Um. Now, as I'm turning it, it's because I'm looking at it from the side. You want to make sure you have an arch in there. It's not too high. It's a good spot. Okay, checking from nail to nail. There's still a little bit of cuticle here that I wanna make sure is gone. Nail to nail, shape to shape. This is needs a little bit more almondy. Just a smidge. Gail says farther north near me. See, we'll always make somebody happy depending on yeah, where we exactly. go. Yeah, exactly. But I think that would be if we go to Chicago next year. What year is that? 2022. Then we go more south the following year somewhere. Maybe, I don't know, North Carolina, something like that. And then, then we go up north. So it might be 2024 that maybe we hit that area. This Maine is beautiful in the summer. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing. We're trying to get pregnant. So if I have a baby, what are y'all going to do? Y'all going to hold him? <laughs> Jared comes along. So yeah, he, he's the, he is the baby stealer. But it does mean that probably we'll have to have with me sometimes. So I guess as long as there's a camp, people won't be that upset about whatever happens. Exactly. All right, so nails are on, nails are filed. I'm going to get started with um, our milk bath design. So I'm gonna be using Koi, and I'm gonna do one coat, uh, maybe, nope, you know what, I'm not. I'm gonna do a flower first. I really want to um, bury some flowers. So I'm gonna be doing um, a couple of different layers. So I grab these pasties, these are off of my website. Um, they are from Profiles, and we're going to be using a whole bunch of them, basically. Um, and I'm, right now, I want to bury one deep. So on each nail, I'm going to grab. I'm just going to press that down. And I wanna, the reason is, is because I want to have um, some, some extra dimension with this. So we're gonna put one on each one and then I'm gonna go ahead with a layer koi and then we're gonna do more. And that way you get a little bit of the, that one cracked, but it kind of looks cool. So I'm just gonna leave it. It's very funny because last year this time I had koi on with just a layer of um, one of the new glitters that had come out last year. Maybe it was the year before because last year you weren't even here. It was in April. Was it? Yeah, I can okay. remember I had seen you in March for the last time, like right before they shut everything Oh, gotcha, gotcha, down. gotcha. Yeah. 
I was really proud of those nails. Those nails last like four months. Mm -hmm. One of these years I'll be able to drive there. Yes, Eileen, I promise you. We will do Minnesota because, like I said, one of Jared's besties is there. And so we will certainly be doing Minnesota at some point. Um, but if I'm doing Chicago this time, it'll be like five years probably that I do Minnesota. All right, so after you get those on, you get them pressed down as good as you'd like. See, it stuck up a little bit because of that gel that I had on there. So I'm gonna put this one on real quick and flash cure it. It's gonna flip up. Go and put that in real quick. Okay. And you just wanna get some koi over the top of it. You don't necessarily need to cover the whole nail. Um, because the whole point of milk bath nails is that it's kind of dimensional. You've got more in some places and less in others. And so I'm just trying to get um, this first flower, a little bearing. Maybe I'll do a second one on this one. Oh, sliding, sliding, sliding. Oh my gosh, I keep touching the sticky side. They are really good there and sticky. There we go. Now what is important to remember with um, pasties is that they are staying encapsulated. So as you can see, even though I got this way to the side, you wanna make sure that they are staying encapsulated. Try is close enough to, well, then you'll be able to probably drive next year because I'm guessing we're going to be doing Chicago next year. typically try to keep things off center. Sometimes I have to like see around in my camera. Okay. So again, we're just gonna do a quick coating of Koi over the top. When I do the second one, I will be doing more of a full coverage of koi on the whole nail so that it's all got a nice coverage, yeah. Okay, go ahead on in. So now what you want to do is you want to wipe the tacky off. Is the light on? No. Okay, come back out. Okay. It's that stupid thing. It turns off. So I'm wiping the tacky off because I want to make sure that my next layer of pasties is going to stick. And this time I'm gonna be grabbing lots of things with stems. And you can layer them on top of each other. I 
pasties. I think they're such a great little idea. Oh, I like this one. Okay. Because it's like a lavender. I love lavender. They're really cool. Yeah, so before these pasties came out, the only way to do this really was with dried flowers. And the problem is with the dried flowers is that they just add so much bulk to the nail and it just, it makes the nails so much thicker to really encapsulate them properly. So I did them once and then I'm like, yeah, I don't want to do those again. Try to keep the camps around the same time each year. So, so would be in May. Yes and no. So the reason camps are typically in the fall or spring is because winter is the holidays and you cannot do them in the summer because the facilities we use are summer camps. And so they are typically in the, sum, in the spring or fall um, because of the facility needs and because of, um, otherwise we'd be in the winter. So yeah, it would be April or May. Um, yeah, all right. So after we get our second one on there. Now I'm gonna do a little bit more. Maybe I want a little tiny smidge of this one. Let's see, let's do. So if you're adding a little bit to the end, like I just wanted a little something here, it needs to be fully encapsulated. So I'm going to cut it off. I just want to have a little bit of color there. Perfect. So I'm going to be doing one, um, one coat and then in. Here comes Shayla. Mm -hmm. We're getting close though, so I'm not too far behind, which is good considering we started about 10 minutes early. Hello. How are you, gorgeous? Welcome back. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm tired. Thank you so much. That's okay. Come on in. I told everyone you were coming. So there you go. So there's your milk bath. You just add another layer of koi and it's gonna smooth out right over the top. And, uh, and sometimes the stickers do like to pop up. So I typically will flash cure um, after a nail or two, just so that everything stays put. Okay, freeze that for me for a second. So Celeste had asked what color I'm using, and I'm using Koi. Koi is an extremely popular color. We go through an insane amount here at the shop. Um, it's so versatile, that's why. Yeah, it's really, really popular, and it is what you want to use for your milk bath nails. And I did a base of, um, I created the nails with Balance Warm. So you can see it's sticking out just a smidge here. I'm gonna cut it because I wanna make sure that that's gonna stay encapsulated. So I did um, a base of Balance Warm, so that's what's underneath. And I wanna be careful not to cover them too much. So you kinda drag, put the koi on and then drag it off just a smidge where needed so you still get to see your colors. Freeze that for me. So we have to come up with like cool nails in June. Alika okay. is getting doing his wedding this year. Oh, in nice. Because Hawaii, Hawaii's going to open up more. Oh, good. Well, Hawaii's been open. I've had so many clients been going since February. Oh, yeah, no, but they're opening up more like with the wedding. For events. Like events and stuff, yeah. That's good. Yeah, I can't ever do camp in Hawaii. We have too much stuff we take. <laughs> That would not go over well. Yeah, our trailer had to get dropped off, so the trailer that we take everything for camp in uh, needed a new roof. What? So, yeah, it was leaking pretty bad, and it happened at the last camp, which was a pain. So we had to get a new roof on that, so it is currently doing that. All right, second before you take off or oh that's good to have a new roof before yeah. yeah well and what sucked is that it was really difficult to find someone who would do it we're like jared basically had to just be like look i need you to let me bring this in i need the roof oh i need to wipe the sticky off 
almost forgot. The pasties aren't going to stick to the tacky layer of your gel polish, so wipe the sticky layer off. Like with foils, sometimes people are like, my foils aren't sticking. I'm like, flip them over. <laughs> They're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that's all I needed to do. I'm like, yeah, it happens. It's okay, it's life. Yeah, it's realism. So many flowers. No. So you want to, as you can see, if you plan to do these, you need to have... You know, you can maybe get two clients out of one pasties thing. So normally when you get pasties, they'll last for many clients. But with doing these milk bath nails, that takes almost a whole sheet just for one client. So make sure when if you get them and you're promoting that you're going to do them, that you get a couple sets because you will go through these pretty quickly. These are really perfect April nails. They are super perfect for Easter and springtime. You know, because we all know what my favorite color is. Mm -hmm. Which is the Merlot, which is a dark color. Okay, a little bit of this one. Can we see Shayla's nails too? Yeah. Come on over. Oh, stick your yeah, hands yeah. under. Oh, you mean video Shayla's nails? Y'all, oh. my phone's going to... No, you can show oh, okay. it. See, see. You can see yeah, what she right. has on. It is so nice to see you. You too. Did not come in like a wrecking ball. I apologize. Okay. You can stick your hand oh, under. Okay. Well, just... No, I can't. Uh, so I she could, wanted to copy me. So yeah. you can see what the difference in color is with her hands being cold. She just washed them and mine are um, warm. Oh. So... This is the same kind of technique that I did on hers, but the same colors. So, mm -hmm. and what 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 do you think about those? Oh, these were, these were the best. These were popping. I got all kinds of compliments. <laughs> Thank you, darling. I was waiting for her to say they're my favorite because every. <laughs> oh, are we? Yeah. We just oh. Have to out what color we're doing. I see. Because you didn't change yours. So. <laughs> now I have to think. She's changing. Hers next week. Yeah. You came a week too I early. Really, right. Usually I just come in. She goes, "What are we doing? Whatever's on your hands." Mm -hmm. This so is funny. very true with me too. I copy a lot of Jess's mm -hmm. nail designs. It's just easier that way. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. I mean, we gotta think about dinner and all this other stuff. I don't have time for this. I just want to be like you. So let's go. You're so funny. I'm just going to snip the end off that, make sure it lays down good. All righty. Charge your phone and design the film part. All right. We will, we will, we will, we will film redoing Shayla's because some people have asked how I did mine. So it's pretty easy. Um, but it's going to be till we get to that part, probably about 40 minutes after I finish with um, Tanya here. So you can kind of time when I'll be popping back on if you want to see. Freeze that for me. Okay. Uh, Jessica White says, hi, Shayla. What's up, Jess? How are you doing? Oh, it's going to be a party today. It's a Friday. Oh, and just for, just for giggles, so I'm going to tell you, tomorrow's my birthday. So <gasps> oh, what? we have oh, April birthdays in the house. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Mine's in 21 days. Oh, you're an April baby too. Yeah, it's yeah. April birthday we day. Jolly special greet here. Mm -hmm. So 
So doing my second coat of Koi, getting more of a full coverage on this one, trying to get the stickers to lay down where they're supposed to. Jared's bestie in Minnesota. I think he just had his baby last night. Aww. She's early. She had just posted the other day that she was doing five weeks. And then, ta-da, mm -hmm. she wanted to make an early appearance, apparently. That's true. So, we have a little one that's a couple of years old. Put that in. And, um... Yeah, he was due the same time I was due the last time, so. All right, so I'm going to just do a little bit more on this one because it was sticking up. I want to make sure that I'm going to think I'm going to nip that little bit that's sticking up off because it's going to cause problems, and I don't want problems. Okay, freeze that again, please. Jessica White says she misses you. I miss her, too. We all miss her. We all miss her. I know. What part are you in when the door opens back up? I'm going to have to fly her out here and just have a party. Definitely want to be open house, my new house, next year. Yeah, that would be nice. And I mean adults, not children. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to make sure I get this right over the top of this pasty there. So that's the look we're definitely going for, is that milk bathy look, which is great. And after I finish with them, we're gonna top coat. So I'm gonna be using, that's FedEx. Uh -huh. um, I'm going to be using, just checking this one, make sure it's good. I'm going to get a little closer to the cuticle on there. I have some more shirts coming for camp. i got to get the logos and stuff on them now. But I made sure everyone was talking about last week, I need more shirts. I'm like, okay, I will come up with something. So much preparation to do. All right, so anytime you're doing a white nail, it's not a bad idea to use ultra gloss for your gloss. And the reason is it's a completely non-porous gloss, so it's gonna um, prohibit staining the best way possible. So I'm gonna use my 106 flat brush and float this over. And it is a gel, meaning you can really get a nice gloss over the top, and if you have any bumps, it should be able to work lovely so especially coming into summer you're going to have a lot of people that start using bronzers and self tanners and using this top gloss is going to save your day because it's going to eliminate any of that cracking now you don't wouldn't want to use this over for instance, a gel manicure that doesn't have a hard base. So if you're doing a regular base color top gloss gel manicure, you might get shattering because this is a hard gel gloss and you need a little bit more structure than what natural nails like to do. And with those kinds of gel manicure, the natural nails are moving a lot. You get a little bit more of a um, problem with chipping, those kinds of things. You're going to want uh, to use a different kind of gloss. But for if you're using Trinity as your base, like I do, then you will have a perfect finish. All right. Oops. Dang it. It was perfect. And then I touched it. Touch the cuticle like I did. Just make sure you use your orange wood stick to get it out. All right, cure please, full time. 
What are options clear as the base? Options clear is flexible, but it's enough strength that it should be perfectly fine. So you can use this as your top if you're using options clear as a base. But what my question would be is why are you using options clear as a base? Because that's, you know, it's a more expensive gel and it is designed for soak off. Um, and I guess if you're doing it because someone just has super flexible nails, I would recommend if you're using options clear as a base to try Trinity. Um, it's a little bit less expensive and I feel like you get such an amazing bond with it that um, it's worth switching. So because I'm a nail tech and I watch cost just as much as y'all, you know, it saves you quite a bit because options are a more expensive gel. But this is a non-porous top gloss. So if you are planning to be able to soak someone off for some reason, um, you would have to file this off anyway. But on regular clients, I don't recommend that you be soaking all the time. It's much more damaging to their natural nail than just doing a hard gel as a base coat. You're not doing it thick. You know, when I do my layer of Trinity, it's not a thick layer. You're basically doing it as a base coat. But it's a protective layer that gets to stay on the nail and protect the natural nail. And that's much better for the client than constantly soaking. As you can see what the removal process was doing to her poor fingers while she was not in my care. And now she is. They shall be back to normal. Be fine. They shall be much better, much happier. All right, just check these, make sure they're good. This one had a sticker sticking up just a little bit, so I'm going to make sure that I get just a extra. smidgen extra gloss there just to make sure it's encapsulated. All right, go ahead and cure, please. And you do file off of her, so you could try to switch. Um, it's the only one that works for her, well then, by all means, use it. Um, but yes, you can, it's not too flexible. You should be able to have no problem doing that. All right, just getting a new wipe. I'm gonna clean these off, shiny, shiny, shiny. We like that sound. Yeah. So we started 10 minutes late, so it's taken me an hour and 35 minutes, and I had to remove. So it, if you're booking an hour and a half for this kind of a full set, you should be good to go. Um, unless you start late and you have to remove. So it's a little bit, added a little bit extra time. Um, As I was, when we were driving here, I made the same mistake and turned on the wrong road. And I was like, uh, you've got to be kidding me again. I got to put it in your GPS. So I always finish the full set, any, any service. I always finish by filing the perimeter again because you never know if a little bit of your gloss has moved on you. And then for my final, I'm going to drop a little bit of oil. This is peach vanilla right now. Mm -hmm. It's the Cuccio oils. I love them. And I always do this in white because if you have any residual tacky layer, this little step will remove any of that. So just check. I see a little bit of product there. Let me just make sure that it's, yeah, it's not, it's not anything. It just gets washed away. All right there, guys. I hope you enjoyed this full set and milk bath nails. They turned out quite nice. Um, and we will catch you guys next time. Let me know if you have any other questions. Bye.